yours. Hello, people at Interwebs. It's your favorite Abana Warehouse Sarah here with another car review. And today I have the 2020 Nissan Ultima Platinum VC Turbo. In case you guys have not heard of this thing yet, don't worry, I'm gonna nerd out in my garage on this engine in a minute. However, VC Turbo stands for Variable Compression Engine that has a turbo. I'm definitely feeling the scarlet red color. This is pretty. And the fact that the Nissan hamburger bun is actually proportional to a real hamburger bun. You could slap some patties and cheese and veggies on there and it would look all right. I think. Yeah, the V-Motion grill kind of reminds me of a few generations ago, the styling of the Volkswagen Jetta in the front. I like it. That's clever what they did with the headlight right there. It looks like little arrows pointing inward. You got the LED day timer that just turns off while you're trying to record it. But now you can see what it looks like with the light off. You people at Nissan must really like saxophone players because again, you have a set of Hankook Kenny G's wrapped around these 19 inch gloss black machined faced wheels. <laughs> Why am I so weird? I want to see a different trend from automotive manufacturers other than machine face wheels for the 2020s. It's not a bad design to the wheel though. It's actually a meaty tire on this thing. It's 23540. I wonder how this thing handles. We shall see. Body styling trends that are not only functional, but good looking are a huge win. I mentioned this in my center review. There's a link up above if you have not seen it yet, but this rear quarter panel has this black plastic piece that separates it from the roof pillar cap over here, which makes it way easier to do body work, especially on a tri-stage finish like this scarlet red that would be hard to match. So if you get a ding down here or up above one of the doors, you don't have to paint everything because you have this separation right here. This right here, was the most noticeable thing to me when this Ultima got redesigned and I saw one drive by. And you're probably wondering what the hell are you talking about? This right here, amber in the tail light. Usually it's just red or clear and the bulb illuminates amber for your turn signal. You haven't really seen amber in a tail light on a car in a long time and it's a good looking tail light. You win, Nissan. You get a cookie just for that. Let's play a game of what's in my trunk. That wasn't a butt reference. What is this thing? Oh, it's the help me escape thing. And there's some levers that pop the rear seat down. Ah, there we go. Hey, look at that. There's an airbag in the back seat. Crazy. Look at that. It's a real muffler with a real exhaust tip and it actually flows with the rear diffuser that is painted body color. Noise. Hi, welcome to the inside of a Nissan Ultima. You guys know how I do these reviews. I don't read off brochures. So I'm just gonna tell you what it feels like to actually be sitting in the seat that I'm sitting in right now. And the report from my ass cheeks is that it's rather comfortable. Ooh, that's a shiny door jam. There's no grease or anything on the hinges. Lots of clear coat in there. I would definitely wax those jams. Super comfortable seats. And the perforation holes on them are very organic. The way they flow, it looks like the movie Avatar. The piece of wood on the dash I don't know what kind of tree that's supposed to mimic. Maybe a countertop tree from Starbucks, but it's pretty. There's a little piece of plastic that tells your baby to read a book about information. Oh, and you can take it off. The piano black trim that's over here by the door switches and down by the shift lever has a metallic black pearl effect to it. It's pretty. And speaking of buttons in here, there are buttons in the interior of this car that have functions. Emergency trunk access. Use key or sufficient tool to release lever in direction of arrow. Why couldn't you just put a real lever there? I'm not gonna stuff something inside there. Nice little touchscreen infotainment tablet here stuck to the dash. Does have some knobs on the side in case you wanna adjust your volume in your stations. Has navigation as well as it talks all the time to let you know when there's thunderstorms coming or if a road isn't paved even though it really is paved. And it is multilingual with just about every form of robot and fruit speak possible for your smartphone. So no compatibility issues there. The Bose sound system sounds decent if you keep the volume lower to mid-level. If you crank it all the way up, it starts to distort and get a little wonky sounding. It's a good looking flat bottom steering wheel, some nice grippy areas up top and a miniature little airbag. They're getting really tiny in cars now. It is a little bit humid today, so I got some flyaways, but I can hear my hair scraping the ceiling. So that's an indication that headroom's a little smidgen close back here. If you're over six foot, 
you're probably gonna end up hitting your head in the ceiling. Let's start this bad chicken up. This thing, I've already driven obviously because I had to get here. Sounds, let me tell you about sounds. I don't know how it sounds like on the outside, you'll have to tell me. Sounding. I can only imagine what this is sound like with an aftermarket turbo back exhaust system. As far as the gauges go, there's a fairly optimistic speedometer on here that reads all the way up to 180 miles per hour. They're fairly basic. They're analog, a little digital screen in the center. There's quite a few menus you can go through. There's quite a few tech options on here too. You got the radar cruise control and a bunch of safety features as well. And then there is a menu for, if I get to it, variable compression turbo. There's actually a gauge that shows you your compression ratio changing as you drive. So it's green down below for eco and power up top for power. And as far as drive modes go, I missed this in the center of, but there is a little black button with a white line that you press that and you get a little S on the gauge. I mean, sport mode. Sport. All right, let's drive this thing. I had an urge to just do a Bernie Sanders right here out of this concrete parking spot. In the name of science, it is now time to give it the beans. Can't wait for this. All right, sport mode by pressing the little hidden button on the shift lever. And then I'm going to turn off VDC here in the menu on the gauges. There's no physical button for that. I'll give this thing a little assistance and engage slingshot. Ready? Go. Hesitate. There's the boost. There's the slingshot. Damn, this engine is like, it's loud. It roars. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah, this thing rips. I sense a little bit of a torque management software or something holding it back from a dead stop acceleration because I had the VDC turned off and there was still something restricting me from just letting it eat. It didn't spin the tires or anything. That's a hot rod. Hello and welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. I can't wait to get going on this one, but first we're going to start with the basics because there's a lot to cover here. This VC Turbo is a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder that produces 248 horsepower at 5600 RPM and 273 pound feet of torque at 4,000 RPM if you fuel it up with 93 octane fuel. Now, if you stick some garbage 87 octane in here, it's only gonna produce 236 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque. Jeez, look at the size of that intercooler piping. That is huge. It's like, ow, hot. Now for the geeky stuff. I am not an engineer. I don't claim to be one. I am a technician. I kind of know what I'm doing when it comes to working on cars. However, I definitely recommend you check out Jason from Engineering Explains video on this variable compression engine. He does a much better job explaining it than I'm about to. However, I'm gonna take a stab at it, so here goes. Basically what you have is an electric motor that then utilizes a robotic baby arm to change the position of a lobed shaft that then has what looks like connecting rods riding on it. Those connecting rods go up or down and then change the angle of a seesaw piece that is called the multi-link. The multi-link then raises or lowers the crankshaft connecting rods and pistons that then changes your compression ratio from either eight to one compression to 14 to one compression. So it's like old school turbocharged engine or almost like Mazda Sky Active gasoline compression ratios there. Power and efficiency. Please don't eat me alive engineers, I did my best. It's now time for the braking test. No one behind me? Okay. Woo! Pull to the side a little bit. Good brakes. Woo! That just felt unnerving. Hello, I'm back. The drivetrain found in this Ultima is a front wheel drive, Jatco sourced, continuously variable transmission. I will not say any more on that. However, I will say this. There is an optional all-wheel drive system that is available, but you can't get it with the VC Turbo. And that also comes with the CVT. 
You know what I'd like to see? Automotive manufacturers. I know you guys can't make profit by offering manual transmissions because rarely anybody ever buys them. So here's an idea. How about you just charge us extra? Like I would be willing to pay $3,000 more for any car just with the option of a manual transmission. Make it available, just charge us for it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Slingshot. This thing is so loud inside the car. So much induction sounds to it. It's way quicker once you're already rolling and you just ease into that throttle pedal. I actually notice if you just mash the gas, there is kind of a delay, but if you roll your foot to that gas pedal, you, you get the nice slingshot effect. It doesn't like just having the gas pedal mashed down. The sport mode's good. I actually like the sport mode. It's keeping me right in that power band all the time. There's actually not much of a delay when I give it gas. Brakes are touchy on this car. In a good way though. Lots of grip right there. There was no understeer. The road's definitely paved, although it doesn't sound like it with all those chunks of tar the tires are picking up. Man, <laughs> this car is actually quick. Ooh, brakes. Ooh, G-forces. Lots of grip right there. Wow, it didn't understeer. It's a good car. It's not bad. This is fun to drive. This is really fun to drive. Say what you will about the complexity of this engine. I know coming from a technician standpoint, I can agree there are a lot of variables in that engine that could potentially go wrong, but I'm still happy that Nissan pushed the envelope with the internal combustion engine and was innovative and came up with some kind of new technology that gives you this kind of power. And on top of that, I've been averaging just under 30 miles per gallon. And that's with a heavy foot too. As far as everything else in here goes, the Ultima bits, nothing really jumped out over the top unique about it. It's just, it's a car to get from point A to point B and it's comfortable. And it's got an awesome engine in it. So if you guys never seen one of my reviews before, I have multiple categories that barely make any sense to someone shopping for a car, but to people that get it, they get it. <laughs> anyway, the first up is the bean score. It is a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get inside here when you give it the beans. And this VC Turbo Edition of the Ultima is getting a rating of 1.6 beans. This thing is surprisingly quick. And if you've never driven a turbocharged vehicle before with a CVT transmission, yes, I know, you can hate on CVTs. However, it's kind of fun when you pair those things together because when it builds boost, it literally just slingshots you and it's, it's fun in a weird way. Next is the cookie score. It is a rating of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you spend. It's an assessment of value and the platinum level of the VC Turbo gets a rating of two, point eight cookies it's getting above average rating there was nothing really about the platinum level that blew me away i wasn't wowed by its features however i do think you get quite a bit for the price of the car and the engine in here yeah it's on point i like it lastly is the penguin score it is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much i personally like a vehicle and this car right here is getting a rating of 2.9 penguins. I like this car just because it's fun to drive and I'm happy to see Nissan doing something creative now and it seems like they're on in the up and up. I'd like to see the Frontier come out with something really impressive for the next generation. Maybe like a TRD Pro Fighter or something. I don't know. Hope you guys enjoy this review and I'll see you soon with another. Bye. If your baby is reaching for information, be sure to hand it a book.